in this hour what we are going to to do is to make our is to complete our uh, integration between the react application and server uh, so the server is the one that we developed and the one that i provided you with the all the extra um, route for adding deleting uh, not deleting sorry updating uh, adding uh, and voting uh, for answers um, do you see it well or bigger is it okay okay so we we need to start the server but not to touch it a lot instead we need to work in react so last time we just get the questions from the API and we modified the route um, not the, the route not the route but we modified a single question for um, and we added the answer state here so we still have the answer state in up but we said that we don't need it there because this is these are the answer of a specific questions of a specific question because the api server give us the answer of a single specific question at a time so it makes sense that the answer of question number one are in the components that render the question number one and not in app.js because they in app.js you don't need all the answers you just need all the questions and we made all of this work <coughs> for updating the information for getting the information from the server so now so with all the gets so in the api we had created last time get questions and get answers now we can try to add the three missing operation that are all post or put that are which are the three missing operation that this application can do and is not doing with the server Modify and edit an answer uh, vote up, vote up. and uh, no vote down we don't have we don't have vote down in the, the application but yes vote let's say uh, it doesn't really change if you up or down and uh, add an answer right we also have an add an answer so let's start with vote we moved the vote here this was just a copy and paste of the same method we had in app and we move here because this depends from uh, answer and we have answer in single components now not in app so we cannot have these methods there because this, the state is here hmm? So, let's make it work with the server. So the first things we need is an API, right? Const, let's say, let's say vote, async, uh, do we need something for voting? Any parameter? The, the answer ID, not the question ID, right? we are voting a specific answer and if you see if we if we look in the api for vote we need the id of an answer hmm? so that's our input the id of an answer that's the information we need and then we need to say if it's an up vote or a down vote but in our application we just have the up vote so that will be easy to, to do we just need the id of the answer to be voted on so now you should be more or less expert what we are going to write here const, 
const response sounds a good starting point then then fetch yes let me write it this way because it's pink easier in this case server url slash api slash question no slash answers slash uh, answer id slash vote which is the api then Mm -hmm. we have to change method because this by default is a get we need instead a post right so we need a post how do we change method do you remember we insert another parameter, insert another parameter that is an object and here we insert for instance method post this is an object so that's why you use colon Method pods, we need to insert other things. The body. And the body is? Yes, we can say json.stringify um, and it's vote, upvote. In this case, it could have been just the string is not really different. Writing is an object or as a string but let's use this so that we can also keep it, copy and paste for the next um, API that we're going to write because also that is a post so it's easier and we need another thing here in this object which the content type that is an header and we have to write so content type um, application json mm, that is another object okay then so we do our fetch with the post with the right header with the right body what do we need to do now yes wait for response and then after waiting for the response check if the response is okay so let me check if the response is not okay if response is not okay uh, we can say const because wait let's see what the so the these things say that if the response is not okay we'll send an error so 503 or 42 and if we look also in the server we see that we send an actual error in the body as a JSON file so we receive something in any way in any case in case of 503 we receive an error and in case of 5422 we receive an, a, an array an, a JSON object with inside an array so we receive content so if the response is not okay we can say that we get the error message and we can do await uh, response.json because it will be a json and we can do throw error message and we will use try catch the other side else return if it's okay what will return hmm we, if it's okay, we just receive uh, 204 and nothing else. So we can return null. 
a string, whatever. So to do things probably, let's say, better, we can say add a proper error handling. Well, actually, better, improved error handling, but because right now we are just throwing the error to the React application. We are not handling, actually. But here, we can return now because we don't have a body. Uh, and, and we return now if it's okay. So the information is that something returns. And we can return something. Also, we can return a sentence like the vote has been recorded if we want to display that. It depends on what we want to do in the application. So for now, now is okay. We need to export this as API. And now, in this vote up method that we already have, and we work, and we know that it works without going to the server, what do we need to do? Here we just have the update to the application state. Hmm? What do we need to add? Say it again. The update to the server. Where? For, before or after? Okay, so this is temporary um, update, let's call it, and we will set after. So here, after the set answer, we need to do API dot vote. Let me check if API is already imported. Yes. And we need to pass the answer ID. That is the parameter of this function already. Answer ID. So dot then and dot catch. So we need the dot catch. We can use try and catch. It's the same, but since it's one line in the dot catch, we can say, uh, for instance, that we do console dot log of the error. And dot then, what do we need to do? So if the response is okay, if the vote is fine, what do we need to do? How we set the update permanent? With? I didn't hear. Oh, the, 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 the temporary update, you mean? The waiting? What's the custom state? Yes, we, the temporary update is here. We will go back in a while. This is the temporary update. This is the actual update that went well. So independently from how we handle the temporary update, what we need to do when we are sure that the vote has been casted and has been casted correctly. Yes, we render the components means which state uh, which is the operation we need to do let's forget which is the operation the logical operation we need to do update the state is too general what we need to do what we need to do that means call the API again get the list of answers to get the new vote our new vote and hypothetically anything else that happened in the meantime, hmm? that is one of the things we have said. Now, rotating after update to get information, fresh information if there are others information. So here we can do how it was called get answers. We can call the same method we have above, that is get answers, that get all the answers. Hmm? And this method was in the use effect. And we just need to 
move away from the use effect because otherwise it's not accessible to other functions. And that's it. Hmm? So we set a temporary the state and we are going to do something for temporary. Anything, we will pick one. And then we call the API for vote. If there is an error, we console log the error. We should better handle, like, oh, there is an error, we should revert the state, or we should call get answer in any case, even if, if we have an error, so that we have the current state. So again, error management can be improved, but it's the same thing. Instead, if it's go well, we at this point ask for all the answers, so that we have the remove automatically the temporary state. And what we can do for the temporary, we can say that, for instance, this is voted answer. Let me change the name because here we already use, well, no, we, here we don't use answer. So answer is equal to new answer. And we can say that, for instance, answer as um, voted property now, let's call this true. And we return answer. And this is something that you can do because, because this is JavaScript, right? Because we have an object that is answer that has some specific field and we just decide to add one more at runtime. Because yes, because we need it. Hmm? So this is part of the flexibility because that is an object and we can edit an object whenever we want. So we just added a voted property to that object is just temporary. We don't want the voted object to the entire answer constructor because we don't care but in that moment we can add voted true and we can use this voted true in the below for instance we can disable the vote button or we can change color but let's say that we disable the vote button where is the vote button here is, is um what is the vote button? It's in answer. So we need to pass it. No, we already have. So in answer component, we can disable, for instance, the vote button. Answer action, vote up here, disabled equal, not here. Here, disabled, it's called props.answer.voted. Hmm? So, since voted does not exist uh, and does not exist is falsy, is undefined, in, in undefined is falsy, that will be enabled. But when it becomes true, then disabled will be true and we disable the button. So let's see if all of this work. So let's install everything first of all. Then I need to launch Nodemon server and npm run dev. and localhost 5173 and we are here and the vote change the button is still active because we are on the same computer so it's all fast but if we refresh just to check if we got the vote scored we still see nine minus nine so the operation is is done what we can do to see if this button becomes disabled at a certain point? Where? Set a timer. No, because that is one way of cheating, but it's on the right, on the wrong side. We, for instance, we want to see what we can do is in the API here exactly write set timeout 
So let's wait. Let's slow down the server. So the server will wait three seconds before replying. That is just for seeing if it's working in a quick way. Don't, do not submit something like this at the exam because I've seen something like this. So you can try if you want, but don't submit slow down server at the exam, right? So this is for trying. So we slow down temporary the server so we can see, hmm? so we can see, you see that the button is disabled because this is a temporary update. And then after three seconds, more or less, because it set them out, it becomes enabled and these components refresh with the new data. We don't see the component refreshing, but still the component refresh. So if we, by chance, we have, let's say, a delete button here that we don't have, it will be the same thing. Hmm? A delete button will act like the vote up, but instead of um, editing, an object in the state, we will delete an object temporary, maybe we'll, we can change the background to red, but it will be exactly as the vote up. So another function here in the same position in single, comp in single question component, etc., doing the editing of states, the, the, the call, to the to the server and handling the success or not and when it's success ask for the list of answers hmm? and again the advantage of asking the list of answers is that if we have other changes made by other clients we also get those hmm? so again is the better than nothing solution getting information fresh sometime okay so again, if we have a delete that is on the same line and it's just one operation like acting entirely on one object without any specification because there is no form, just the delete, it will be the same thing. We don't have a delete method, but it will be exactly the same thing. And this is the one, the, the, the way of working that there is in the slides. So there is the temporary update and there is the check on the server and, uh, and there is the removal of temporary updates through the update of the entire list. And since this is started from a user event, we are handling the API here and not in the use effect, as we said. Hmm? Because this is clearly something that uh, is, could be is a side effect. But since it's uh, user events, hmm? a user interaction, this is the event handler in a way, because the event handler of that button calls this method and basically nothing else. So since this is the user interaction, the user events, the, user end, the, the event handler, we can handle these specific kind of things here in the um, in event handler. Okay, now let me remove this slow down of the server and let's do something a little bit more complicated actually let's do the add so the add is a form right is a form that is um, called by this root here that call the answer form um, component and pass the add answer method. The add answer method is defined here in app and as it was vote up and this add answer set the new state for answers. So if we do exactly like we did for um, vote up, we should move this method in single question component. Because we in app don't have the state of the answers. The state of the answer is a single question component. Right? 
Are you following, following up to here? Hmm? So we cannot have this method here because the set answer is not here, is in single question component. So ideally, we should move this on the other component. But in the other component, we don't have the route. And we don't have the answer form. And the answer form need this to update the answer. Hmm? Because if we open answer component answer form hmm? on the submit, there is add answer and there is the navigate towards another page. So on one side we we don't have the answer here so this method cannot stay here because the state is another we move the state away from here on the other side this answer form this route cannot be moved away from up because in up we have all, all the routes in this moment and this answer form needs to manipulate the state that is not in app but in single question. So, is the problem clear? No, yes, more or less. More or less. Okay. So, let's try to, to say that again. At the beginning of time, we had answers here, we still have, but we are not using. We should delete this from here. We had answers here, we had as the answer here, we have update answer here, and we had vote up here. Because all these methods pertain to the same state, that is answer, that was here. Now, when we connected the database, we said that the answers are the answer of single questions because the REST API gives us the answer in that way. So not all the answers available, just the answer of a single questions. And we can get the answer of that question only from the page that contain the questions, the single question. So we move the state of the answers from up to single question component. And we also moved vote up from up to single component. And we have seen now that this is working because we can set the answer and we can vote and then we can get all the answers after voting. Hmm? So sounds a good place to have all the answers. Now, if we want to do the same thing for add answer that is actually needing the answer state, as vote, we should move this add answer in single component because here we don't have set answer. But differently from vote, that is just a button here, the add is another page. It's not that table, it's not the component, it's another component at another route, is another page. And currently, the route is defined in app. Hmm? So this component is defined in app here. Hmm? Because there is its own route, there is the answer form, and since the answer form needs to add items to the answer state, we also have add, add answer methods passed as a props. Hmm? Currently. So now we have a problem because this add answer cannot stay in app because the state is not in app but is in single question. So if we move add answer, we need to delete this from here. And so how can the form that is called from app and that stay in the answer form component edit a state that is not in app, that is not in answer form but that is in single question component is the problem. 
Hmm? Because we cannot pass, if we move an answer, we cannot pass an answer here. We should write something like this without an answer. But then answer form uses an answer to actually add the answer to the state. So moving the answer state from up to single components create a problem that this cannot edit the state in app because the state is not in app anymore. Is this slightly clearer now? Okay. Now, how can we solve this? We could solve this with a context. Why we are not going to solve it with a context? <laughs> it's possible. It's one way to make it work. It's in up, yes, let's say that is not, in this case, it's the context is the easiest way to solve this. Oh, we have a problem with the state, let's use a context that spreads the state everywhere. But it's not the goal of the context, right? The goal of the context is to uh, communicate small information that are needed for all the components. And it's not an information that are needed for all or most of the components. This should be just a shortcut. So that it's technically possible, it will work. It will be quite a lot of work to set up a context with all of this. It will work is not the best solution we can think of. Other solutions. One should be, should came to your mind. We can send a state with link. We can? We can send a state with link when we, go, when we go back to the other route. Which state we, you want to send with a link? Uh, the new answer, the updated answer or the new answer. So in the form, submitting the form, and tell me if I'm following. Submitting the form, you send that link, the, the, the object to this list of questions, the single, the list of answers. You get the new answer somewhere somewhere to the state and from there when you receive that answer you do all the operation that could be a possible solution a little bit tricky because it's possible solution because you need to pass an object and it needs to be serialized and then you need to deserialize as we do actually and then if you have a problem like it's not added anymore how do you go back to the form? You, you cannot. So it's a, pos it's a possibility. Moving the newly added and think about the newly updated because it's the same form. So the things that we are choosing for add, it will be the same things we can go, we can do for update. That could be another solution. Other solutions. That's better than context, more via viable. It's, it requires a little bit of handling because you have to build the object, send the object, and you need to distinguish if it's update or edit because you will do some different things and so when you receive you will do you would need to call when you receive it in single question component you need to call two different methods one for add and one from update it's possible it's not probably immediate but that could be a solution other solutions one should be really is not one we are going to do but should be really immediate to you We moved the state from the app to single question component. One possible solution should be, could be move it back. So lifting up the state again from single component to app. This may, will make the state way more complex because in app we cannot have the state of the single answer, but we will need the, of the single question, but we need to keep track which answer associated with which question, because if we can, we have two tabs open, we will probably have maybe two questions open, three questions open. So we need to keep track. So the state will be more complicated. We need to handle the state for updating, adding things in the state. We need to go back and look for the single question. So it's another possibility. We need to go back. It's more complicated. It doesn't really make sense because the answer, again, are only logically it doesn't make sense, but it's possible. Another. And there is another solution. That's one that we're going to do without using these effects. We have some problem with the use effects. We, 
we don't know how to we have information one components through a route given to the app and we need information in yet another component so even with the use effect is is a problem it's, it's not a real solution That was his solution. Pass back the the answer, the new answer or the added answer to a single question component and then handle it. That's possible. A little bit complicated, but possible. That's the say the the second best solution or another best solution if you want to say the first or second. But it's a little bit complicated. So what if I tell if I tell you that well we don't need the last ID for sure because the ID now is given by the database. So let me just delete this for a moment. But what if I tell can tell you that we don't need this either? We just don't need. We can get rid of that function. And just say answer form. This help in imagining a solution or not? Don't hand off the temporary added answer because when you go back, the, the component is refreshed in any case. When we go back, when we navigate back from the answer form to the single question component, the user factor will be called getting all the answers. So if we add an answer and the time is good, the response is quick. When we go back, we will see the answer added. So we can, and, and, and since it's another page, this is effectively called at month time. So this will be called anyway. Now, if we don't pass add answer, What, so if we don't have this, what do we need to do here when we submit the form? So sorry, let me just remove the last ID and the question ID because we need no, we can we don't have a use effect here. So we are in the end of submit. we can directly call the API because this is an event handler. We are handling the submit event. So we can call the API without this effect because that was what's suggested from the React documentation. So we can directly call the API that we need to write now. So here we can say API dot um, add answer and we are going to write. We can pass the answer and then in the dot then what we can do in the dot then? And then clearly can be also dot catch of something. What we can do in the dot then? If the insertion go well. Exactly. We can navigate back. Okay, let me keep this commented there. Well, let me also remove these comments. Doesn't matter. Hmm? We can navigate back. And here in the catch, we can handle any errors from the server. And here we are in the form. So if we have any problem with the information sent, like, I don't know, the, uh, the text is too short or the date is in the wrong format, etc., we can handle it in the page in which we still have the form with the information we just inserted. So we can edit the answer and send it back to the server. Instead, if we have a problem with the server, we just can show the error. It's impossible to add 
an answer in this moment and then you can click cancel and go back so here we don't have the optimistic update of the state because we don't have the state in this component we just tell the, the person wait for a moment here in the form page and after when the server will reply I will redirect you to the right page with the old answer and you will see the newly added answer hmm? so um, hmm? now we need to write the add answer so in API we need to import us API import API and we need to add an add answer here const add answer async answer and export it and let me also copy and paste basically vote because it will not be so different from vote so what we need to do for add uh, which parameter we need we need the answer and we need also the question id actually so the fetch will be to which address do you remember for adding an answer it will be questions we can read it but where is the readme yes questions slash d slash answers post api questions slash d of the questions slash answers so questions slash question id slash answer it will be answers it will be a post it will be always application json the body will be different clearly what will be the body like this because this is the answer object is already a javascript object json stringify will create a json so like this zero. it's already json string file that does no, the answer is to be zero. it's it will be called to string uh, of all methods so of all the properties so are you sure it's not it's not wrong but it's not going to work so which are the properties of answers? ID, text, name, score, date. Which will be the serialization of date? Of this date? The default serialization of this date? Let's say today. When you printed console.log a date, what do you see? You see the full object, but also you see the single line that say? So here, month, day, and then? Hour, minutes, etc. What do we need here? We just want year, month, and day. So we have an additional piece. But even if we don't have an additional piece, because we don't do the check, for instance, which is the object we are passing? Text, author, score, date. And how is made our text? name not author score and date so this name here 
here is expected as author so we cannot just serialize the object because otherwise the object will be text name score and the date will be 2023 05 whatever and then hour minutes etc that is not compliant with what we want here so we need to to do something more than just serializing the entire object we clearly need the entire object so what do we need to do here instead of just writing if the two objects will be identical that's easy but by chance we didn't create the the rest server identical to the data structure we had so we have a clash of the name uh, name and author and the date should be shortened so what we can write here We can construct. So text will be answer.text. And it will be mostly the same, right? Um, author will be answer.name. Then we have score and date. Score will be or answer.score or this is an adding which will be the score of a newly added quest answer it should be zero already in answer.score but if we want to really be sure that we don't send strange score around we can just say okay this is zero because it will always be zero for adding and then answer.date sorry date answer.date.format in the right format yes well Mm. we need to send it because we decided to send it right these are dpis so in a practical situation you we don't have access to the server so we should rely on what is written in the readme so in the readme say that we need a score we need to pass a score mm. so maybe the server just ignore whatever score value and put zero that's a possibility something that it should it, the server should can do and should do probably but we don't know because we in theory don't see the server so if the client application enforce this it's at most is not needed but since we need to pass the score we we at least are we are double sure that the score will be zero also when we here we don't have the score on purpose right we didn't allow the person to insert a score because the score would be zero so in theory it's already the application that puts score to zero we are just reinforcing the zero just in case and then the server if it does its work well will also reinforce the zero a third time but again in general we don't have access to the server and the server doesn't have access to the client so it's better to be sure that the information that should be there are there in the proper way in both sides if we manipulate both sides okay so here we have this uh, the rest is not changing uh, basically um, so we can go back to the server to the answer form and say that this is not just answer but also we need the question ID that we have because we redirect to the question id so we have this information and in theory we have done so let's um, so we add the answer let's handle the waiting but let's handle the waiting here Question ID 
is here is getting from the parameter because we need it we need it in the past because we had the question ID the answer originally so we get the question ID from the uh, the parameter the URL because it, the it will be questions one at answer so we have the question ID and this is uh, an object of the um, of the components and so all the function within the components can access this object okay um, so if we do uh, okay let's slow down so let's see what happens in case of slowing down so we can for instance add a waiting state so we see also the other option the waiting state use state and by default is false we don't want to wait by default and we then can say that here we set waiting to true so as soon as we handle before doing the other update we set waiting to true and then we can say here, for instance, that in the return, we can add an alert. Uh, that could be waiting and alert. That is, okay, a React Bootstrap element and the alert sorry and the alert can say something like um, please wait for the server answer or something better than this and we can say variant uh, uh, secondary should be that one the gray scale the gray alert or whatever and this is shown only if waiting is true And we can also, if we want, say that, for instance, the add button is disabled. According to the, the value waiting. So if we are waiting, you cannot add another answer if you are waiting for the response. Hmm? And let's slow down the server to see if it's working. Where is the add? Here. So as before, let's slow down this. Set them out. Let's put three seconds. That should be enough. And let's see what happens. So this is still running so let's go back let's open the console to see if there is any error so here we can do add and we can write uh, hello and the name could be me keep the date add see we have disabled add we had the message for three seconds and as soon as we get a positive answer from the server we go back here when this table is get from the server so we are sure that these are the, the information hmm? so if we have a longer time we just see the um, the message for longer hmm? and we can do the same things for update is actually the same identical things for update so, do you want to do it, or do you want to do the API for update? Did you prefer? Okay. So let me slow down the update, since we are here, or, or not, it's fine. Um, so, API for update. The API for updates will be 
almost the same will be update answer in this case we don't need the question ID anymore because in the update we have a different URL in which we need the answer ID only so this will be a fetch to API answers answer dot ID and the method will be put and the header will be the same and the body will be the same except score that in this case is the actual score of the answer because this is editing so in theory one we cannot but in theory one can change the score or still we need to preserve the original score we cannot set zero because this is editing an existing answer so with whatever score we we need and we we need the score hmm? we need to pass the score whatever it is so and everything else is the same this is the same exactly as for the ad and for the, the vote the vote in a way is a sort of update hmm, of the answer so update answer we need to export it and we need to do the same things we did for the ad so in answer form we just need to go here and instead of props added answer we can do api dot update answer we need the answer that is the one we created and we navigate to the same url and we can handle the catch and we still have a waiting the waiting for everything else so basically it's really almost the same things but we just change the put instead of the post because we are reusing the same form so reusing the same form will allow us to simplify the code here hmm? so if we go here and we try so let me start from scratch and refresh so that we are sure let's go here let's edit this one and let's put i don't know um an exclamation mark and let's change the name and do update and we add a wrong API address here so, so we get an error so in case of the error we see please wait for the server and also we have we didn't have the catch so we just see the error and the error was saying that we i wrote the wrong address i wrote api answers five slash answers and that was a copy and paste from before so if we refresh i try again and we do update i didn't slow down the server so the banner appeared for like a millisecond or something and then immediately redirect here because the server was fast enough to immediately show the table and you see that the table is the the line is the correct one with the author the score one and if we refresh we still maintain the same information because this information are the information that came from the server and not from the um the react application hmm? okay any question on this and then we don't have any other operation to do because we did the add we did the vote and we did update any questions on this no good so this closed the basically part on the user facts next week we are going to speak about the authentication and we'll involve both express and react so we will restart from this project and we will just add the login, basically, of a user in this application, both on the server and on the client. So we will start from this project. Uh, probably it will give you the database with a user table. In the lab, you already have the user table in the database. There is no user table in this database of this example. I would probably add it. But apart from that, there should be no other changes on the database with respect to this uh, exercise so
नेक्स्ट टॉपिक exam so we already spoke a little bit about exam right so in this page you will have the exam rules hmm? with some recommendation so the exam rules are identical for the three courses the two in english and the one in italian and are in english for all the three courses just to use exactly the same text so let me summarize how it's going to work. So 20 days before each exam session, you will receive a text of the exam. And here in this page, you can see past version of the exam. So for instance, this was the study plan was the exam of the first exam of last year. And so it will be something like this. You will receive 20 days before each exam date a link to a Google Doc like this. Uh, not in the final version, but in a preliminary version. So this document will explain to you what you have to do. There are the requirements of the web application, the functional requirements in the beginning, and then the, let's say, non-functional requirements like, oh, you have to use React and Express and JSON to pass data. And uh, the database should be done in this way with SQLite and any other requirements, extra requirements. And you have to have a readme file. And the readme file should be the API list on the server with a brief documentation, the main components in React you created explaining what they are and a screenshot of the application or two screenshots of the application it depends the username and the password for login for any user that needs to be login example user if the application contains um, a username and password to be logged in and there is also the submission procedure that is first you need to be enrolled to the exam on the portale and second you will receive together with this document a link to github classroom and you can click on that link, you will be asked the first time to associate your GitHub username to your ID, your student ID on the platform, on GitHub Classroom. And when you do the association, GitHub Classroom will create a private repository with a template of the project for you, individually for you. So after doing the association, you will see in an organization on GitHub, a private repository that will contain an empty readme, a server folder with the basic structure on an Express application, and a client, so, um, a client folder with an empty React application, the one that you get when you just initialize a React application. So two folder and the readme in one repository, individually private. You need to work on your project and the day before midnight the day before of the exam date you will need to push the final version on this repository add a tag that is final in this repository and here there are some instructions you can also use the web interface and then there is written how we test the application so we download the repositories we we clone the repository we install all dependencies in the two folder and we run everything so here there are all the instructions and it will be in every exam text uh, when we publish the exam this will be in not a final version but it's a preliminary version and we keep this version open for comments for let's say one week so in that week any question doubts should be comments like this these are actually comments from last year that may be replied immediately or may bring to any modification, clarification in the text, like in this case, hmm? that were marked in red last year, to specify something that stems from questions. So that week, more or less, will be for understanding the text and start working. 
there will be minor things clarification mostly and then after that week we close this from comments we write final version and any question should go to in the telegram channel mm? so you will write on our telegram channel the other courses will write in their own telegram channel instead these comments will be the same for the two english courses mm? the italian version of the course will have the translation of this same exam it will be the same exam just written in italian mm? and so we then pick all the comments and try to amend the text to clarify any unclear points in both versions of the text in english and in italian for all the courses so that in the end the three courses have the same identical information to proceed in the exam mm? so for the first exam it that will be the 26th of june you will have a text out on the 6th of june mm? 20 days before maybe a few days earlier if we are able to to publish a few days earlier typically we are we typically we can publish a few days earlier especially the first exam and here then there is the exam you have the text you have to develop this application server and client with all the requirements in 20 days you have to submit it by 11 59 pm the day before of the exam so by 11 59 pm of the 25 of june for the first exam and then starting from the 26th of june for the first exam in some way we will starting from the afternoon probably of that day we will go in a room like this and we will do the individual oral for the project that means uh, starting the application checking with respect to the requirements that everything is working checking the readme for the information in the readme checking the code in the server and in the client to see if it's properly done and asking you any question to, related to whatever we see while looking at the project in that moment hmm? but there will be question about things that you have done or not done in the project not theoretical questions and this will last 20 30 minutes per person more or less because we need to run everything check everything so that will require time and then ask something if the project is a disaster it will be shorter if the project is wonderful it will be shorter because it's less question if the project has a problem it will be probably more about uh, 11 30 in half an hour half an hour hmm? more closer to half an hour so this is more or less what will happen here there are the same instruction with some more um, uh, details so about the grade it will be 26 for the project and six for the oral discussion hmm? and you can get a negative score overall even if the project is perfect if you don't demonstrate to know what the project is doing and so if you can even get 26 on the project and then if the oral discussion you say nothing you will get zero of the oral and an insufficient vote score overall because the goal of the oral is to demonstrate that you know what you have done so if you do the project you know what you have done if you had other people doing the project or chat gpt doing the project or whatever and you didn't spend time to understand what is doing then could be a significant problem that is the only possibility to get a positive score on the project and a negative score on the oral that will produce a negative score overall and the score total score is made by your capability in the oral to explain what you have done to reply the answer why this is not working why you did this in your project etc and how much the project will fulfill the requirements so if the requirements say show the list of movies in the home page and you are not showing the list of movies in the home page clearly you lose point hmm? so it will be fulfilling the requirements in the documents that's why we we want the documents to be as much clear as possible and we keep open 
for your comments for one week to have the most clear as possible uh, document to avoid misunderstanding and in any case if you are not sure just ask because a misunderstanding on your side will likely be point loses on, loss, loss of point on your side so if you are not sure better ask twice that be unsure make a decision that is the wrong one hmm? and the text will have some opportunity for you to decide what to do and in that case there is not a right of wrong answer so a wrong solution but there will be maybe question on why you did this which are the alternative for this which are the cons of your specific choice that you have done okay No. Because, I mean, we can no. Show a table we focused on well, you cannot show just a table because we probably the application is more complicated than that. But you don't have a score about the visual aspects um, dedicated to that because that was not one of the goal of the course currently. So we didn't cover how to design a web application from a user experience or user interface perspective we just do something that was reasonable so it's not fair to judge you on the same topic that we didn't cover there are other courses if you're interested on that topic um, in general not only for the web um, so no but clearly if it is totally unusable and it's another time to find to check the requirements that will be so if it's really really terrible uh, in addition to make me and Luca very, very unhappy and angry in that moment, uh, if it's really terrible, it's difficult to test the things that will have an implication because it's not possible to check everything, right? Because it's very complicated, etc. or almost impossible. Oh, you put this under this three level menu and who will ever imagine that it was this three level menu. So that may be a little bit, but if it's uh, readable and it's working, is not that we care much about the visual appearance or the usability because it's not one of the goal of the courses. Uh, also, you talked something about that uh, things had to, had to be done properly. Uh, as we've seen from the previous example, uh, we have multiple uh, solutions about implementing the ad answers. So the you should be able to explain and defend your choice. Okay. If you make a design choice, an implementation choice I can agree or not but you should be able to defend your choice and explain which are pros and cons to see it's not the first things that came to my mind but I thought about it and I think that this was the best solution and then maybe there are cons and we can discuss about cons and maybe there are things that you didn't uh, think about but it's working it's doing what it does it's is not is respecting the best practices that we have done so um, uh, API call not in the user fact if there is an event handler mm, so all these kind of best practices if it's respecting all of these we can have a discussion on pros and cons and that's part of the oral discussion and all of these will run on my computer on our computer not on yours so you will just need to be present on your side on your side so if you are in a room like here you can look at my monitor or, or it depends in which room we are we can maybe also project the application and we can discuss on the application but it will be run on my computer not on yours you see our code, right? sorry you see you will see how your application you don't have laptop because you submit your application on github classroom as written in document as I mentioned before i will download we will download everything we will install everything with npm install and npm install on both sides we will run anything with nodemon and npm run dev we will show you the application we will navigate together with the application so but all the application will be on our computers and according to the people that how many of you will be in in the room for each exam uh, I will typically, if there are many of you, I will typically ask you which slot for the oral discussion you will prefer. I will not assign you in a specific moment of time. And uh, if you are five, yes, probably we do everybody in the same afternoon. But if you are 100, 
we will probably need the entire week to do all the oral discussion because 100 half an hour each you can do the math and uh, i will typically tell you okay these are some open slots pick one that you prefer according to other exams according to other things that you you have done before the deadline the, the delivery deadline so that you can pick the slot that you prefer but again this will be according to how many people if there are 100 people that will happen for sure if, if there are five people we will do everybody in the same afternoon okay so read these long tests when you have time there's also some recommendation about good practices and techniques etc but basically i uh, summarize everything you must use the technology we have seen during the course so express react sql light cannot be my sql it must be sql light and it should be in the project like we did for the course and um, in the last lab that is the lab of last week the next week uh, you will probably have an exercise to put all your lab on github classroom as a test as an exercise so you can also uh, if you are not familiar with the github classroom or not familiar with git you can also use part of that lab to familiarize with the same tool that we are going to use for the exam and that will be a sort of exercise within that lab hmm? so at the end of the application you can also put it on this github classroom in a private repository to you and do all the steps that are needed for the exam in a test way in a way to test it before doing it for the first time for the exam okay any questions we will meet again but any question for now no see you next week and um, on thursday in the lab you will do the same things we have done today but for the movies library and see you next week with authentication authorization